Portions of this podcast may not be suitable for children. It's real-life stories and sometimes PG-13. Art, like morality, consists in drawing the line somewhere. G.K. Chesterton. You're listening to the Think Twice TV podcast. Hear true life stories, portable insight, and engaging messages. On this show, we'll think twice about life, faith, and just what could be possible when the two are combined. Broadcasting from the beautiful Great Lakes state of pure Michigan, here's your host, Dan Henderson. Hey, thanks for joining us on the Think Twice TV podcast. Author and pastor Max Lucado wrote in his book, In the Grip of Grace, Confession does for the soul what preparing the land does for the field. God's seed grows better if the soil of the heart is cleared. Today we have stories about people finding their way and leaving their past behind. Our first story is from Chanel. I first heard of her as the rapper Ms. Reality. She's a well-known Christian rapper in the Lansing, Michigan area. Chanel has a natural charisma and she literally shines with the love of God. I was even more surprised to find out that she hadn't always been that way. Let's listen to Chanel's story, signed, sealed, and delivered. Hello, my name is Chanel Henry, and I'm so grateful for this opportunity to be here today and to share my testimony. I received him as Lord and Savior at the age of 13 years old, and I remember it being so real. As I aged and got older, I strayed away from the things of God and began to just love God with lip service. My husband and I, we've been married now for going on 15 years, he and I, Pretty much, we're just playing church. We go to church as if we were just paying God a favor here and there. I would get high, I would drink, club, pride, gossiping, just lording my own life, um, not allowing him to actually lord my life. As a rapper, I rap secular. I did secular music, and that was one of my main excuses I would use for not really wanting to surrender my life. 2002, I actually had released a secular album. I had a major, a big release party in the city, had a lot of support that came out, and again, that was one of my excuses why I wouldn't be able to surrender, because I would be like, you know, I wouldn't be able to promote this at the club. I, I wouldn't be able to, you know, do my music. And I remember my album cover, you know, truly wasn't even me. I would be almost embarrassed for people to see the album cover. I released that album, and after that, it was almost like God was like, now what? I couldn't even write anymore. I I would struggle to write a song, struggle in the studio. It was almost like God had zapped the gift for me. I'd show up to the studio high just to get that song out, just to record a song. The Lord was continuing to tug at me to surrender, and it was really personal for me. No one else was telling me I needed to get my life right. It was truly divine. God was really dealing with me. I went through panic attacks. I would wake up in the middle of the night um, with shortness of breath. Um, I had no peace. And the Bible says that there's no peace for the wicked. There was a void that I tried to fill again with marijuana, with drinking, with clubbing. Pride and just greed, envy, jealousy. I remember Aaliyah, I admired her as an artist. I will never forget that she died in that plane crash and it was really, God really began to deal with me on that. That really hit close to home, like wow, this girl lost her life. I always had a fear of death. Whenever someone else died, I really feared that could be me, that could be me. I sat down and it was like, I just felt this nudge, like go to Gift and Bible and just get your own Bible. I mean, I just felt like something's gonna happen when I walk in Gift and Bible. And when I walked in, I see my neighbor. After I pick up a Bible I wanted to buy, I went to the music section and thought, you know, I'd pick up a CD and she had never left. She went to the listening station and she was weeping with headphones on. And I'm thinking, hey, Penny, I thought you were leaving. Oh, you gotta listen to this. And so she put a song in my ear and the song was singing, teach me to be more like you, which I had been praying to God because I know he had been dealing with me. And so I just began to weep. So we're both weeping in the music store. And I remember driving home and it was raining really hard and I'm weeping and the music is playing. It's almost like the sun had came out. And I just felt like a a break in me. And I walk in the house and I just fell into my husband's arms and said, I'm tired of running. We both went to church. I'll never forget the altar call came and we both looked at each other. 
said, let's do it. And we went down and we received Christ, uh, rededicated our lives to the Lord. And I remember not telling anyone for about a month. It was almost like I didn't want to share with anyone else because I wasn't really sure if I'd be able to be accountable to what I had committed to. And a girlfriend of mine invited me to church. And I ended up going into the service and sitting down and finding out it was a testimony service. And so I sat through some testimonies and my heart began to pound heavier and heavier and harder and harder. And it was like I had to get up and share. And I got up and I shared that a month ago I had rededicated my life to the Lord. I just began to give God glory of how, you know, things were beginning to fall off from, off of me, the strongholds that I was holding on to. And I'll just never forget that service. It was like a moment of freedom and liberty for me. And I left that church service. I was seeing people on the road and I'm rolling my windows out. I'm saved. I gave my life to the Lord. It was like from that moment on, I just began to confess and just tell people what I had done. All those excuses that I would use um, for not coming to the Lord, like my love for the club and just being, you know, in the clubs and drinking and getting high. And wow, I look back at all those things God showed me, I would no longer want to do anymore. He actually took the taste out of my mouth, the taste of even desiring to get high, the taste of even desiring to be in the club. A lot of people would say, you should do gospel rap, you should do gospel music. And I'm thinking, I don't even know enough about the gospel. I just stopped writing. I, I put the music down. I didn't care about any of that anymore. I just wanted to grow and learn more about the things of God, learn what my purpose was. Um, and so I, I pressed in, the word says, if you draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. That's exactly what happened. I drew near to him for real. And he drew near to me. God divinely delivered me from a lifestyle of serving self. Since then, I've been writing music, um, recording, traveling, no longer exalting me, which I did secular, I exalt him. So I do it as a tool to send his message forth to a people who may not know him. So if you're out there today and you um, may be wondering, you know, what is it to even be saved? You know, do I have to stop doing this, stop doing that, talk this way, look this way? To be saved is to be saved from a life of damnation. If you believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, you need to confess it with your mouth if you believe it in your heart and you're saved. Everything else will fall off. Allow the Lord to walk you through that. Trust and know that he will do it again. If you draw near to him, he'll draw near to you. So don't look at other people. Don't look at your circumstances. Let nothing come between you and God. Press in and just learn to have relationship with him, fellowship with him. Just like I'm sitting here and talking to you today. Talk to him, he's real. Love him, he desires for you to love and, and know him. He loves you no matter what state you're in. He loves you. There's nothing you can do, no wrong you can do that will stop God from loving you. And so again, I thank you for this opportunity. Chanel is still busy making music, doing shows, and helping others in her community. I own all four of her CDs, and I highly recommend them. Uh, make sure to check out her music at soundsgoodrecords.com or click the link in the show notes. Our next story is from a friend of mine. I knew Eric in high school and we even partied together at times. Drinking and drugs were a huge part of his everyday life. I remember Eric being very quiet and depressed. I was shocked when I ran into him years later to see that he was completely changed. He was clean, sober, confident. Uh, something about him was different. Let's listen to Eric's story. Hey, my name is Eric. I had grown up in the church and kind of in a religious home. I knew right and wrong, you know. I didn't really have a relationship with God, though. I just kind of, you know, from that, I got caught up in the element and the, the influence of, you know, our, our society, our neighborhood, you know, it's real competitive. And um, just kind of got sucked into that. I couldn't really hack it in the, you know, the real world. So I basically just fell out of it, gave up on life altogether, you know, after having heartbreak and stuff like that. This, I started gradually getting more and more into alcohol and drugs and just trying to find trying to find myself in these things which are totally unfulfilling. Well I eventually hit rock bottom. I had, I had parents who've been praying for me all along. I know that had a lot to do with it. 
and just it was basically just a lifestyle that didn't want me, you know, and I, quite frankly, I didn't want it either, and it really, it really, a lot of things happened that really just scared me into recognizing that that lifestyle, you know, was just, it was leading to my grave, and it took a few times, too, there were several instances, actually, where I woke up one morning after getting real drunk, and, uh, I had an experience where I just felt like this real darkness, like this weight coming upon me, and then I heard like a, a small voice in me saying, go with God, and I, I listened to it, but you know, of course I was stubborn, and that, you know, nine o'clock in the morning, you find a Mad Dog 2020 or something like that, and, um, but it, it went on like that for probably about a week, and um, eventually I just, I was at my parents' house and this, that darkness came back and I just, I couldn't take it. And um, that's when I gave my life to the Lord and I've been trying to find myself in it because you can't find yourself in anything in this world um, because the only, the only one we can find our true identity in is the one who created us. So what I really encourage people to do who, you know, just have, been fed up with, you know, this, this, that way of life is, you know, to totally commit your ways and the rest of your life to following God, and you will see yourself, you know, being changed. Eric has continued to grow and graduated from Bible school. He'd been a missionary in the States as well as Europe. Next time you see a kid struggling in life, uh, try not to count them out because they could just be another Eric waiting for their freedom from God. If you know an Eric in your life, uh, a young person struggling to find their way, why don't you reach out to them by sending them a link to this podcast? Come see our amazing true stories at youtube.com backslash media messengers. Anyone can count the seeds in an apple, but only God can count the number of apples in a seed. It's time for the absolute basics of the Christian faith from Seedbed.com. Answering those burning questions like who is God, what is salvation, and many more. So, let's take a bite. The absolute basics of the Christian faith. Question one, who is God? If you want, you can imagine it a bit like this. The Father's the one who says, let there be light. The Son is the one who goes and flips on the light switch. The Spirit is the electricity that powers the light bulb. The Father is the source, the Son is the way, the Holy Spirit is the power. Another way you might want to think about this, if you're still trying to get your head around the Trinity, is to imagine yourself kneeling and praying the Lord's Prayer. We're praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Imagine yourself kneeling and praying the prayer. Now imagine Jesus standing beside you teaching you to pray. We begin by praying, though, our Father, just like Jesus prayed. And so Jesus is helping us to have right relationship with the Father. Now imagine that the Holy Spirit is inside you, which he is, giving you the power to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Jesus is beside you, the Father is above you, the Spirit's inside you, all working to give us right relationship with God. Father's the source, Jesus is the way, the Holy Spirit is the power. Now, all this might seem a little bit mysterious and complicated, but the nice thing is that once you start looking for the Trinity, once you understand it a little bit, you see it everywhere. So, for instance, the very words of the Apostles' Creed, we see that they are shaped by the Trinity. We begin with the Father, we move to the Son, and then we end with the Spirit and the Spirit's area of work, which is empowering the Church. Father above you, Jesus beside you, Spirit inside you, there you go, there's the Trinity. I would like to thank Seedbed.com and Dr. Philip Talon for allowing us to use some of the segments from the absolute basics of the Christian faith. On audio, they are very descriptive, but they're even more amazing to see on video format. Uh, what they do is they have a book opened where they have um, an artist rendering these drawings and animating them to what is being told over the audio. So if you're a visual learner or you have kids or teenagers and want them to understand more doctrinal theology, um, this is definitely a really good tool. So go to seedbed.com backslash confirmation. Check the show notes for links. Learn the basics of the faith. Download our free mini book. It includes the ABCs with God, true and false with the Bible, and much more. 
To get the mini book free, go to thinktwicetv.com and click on mini book or contact us with your mailing address and we'll mail you a copy. You're listening to the Think Twice TV podcast. It's time for a bottle of Bill's Wisdom, a short single-serving message of wisdom from our friend, Pastor Bill Leach. The Apostles' Creed affirms that Jesus descended into hell. Somehow, no suffering you go through is suffering Jesus will not endure in order to save you. He descends into hell and he wrests the dominion Satan has stolen out of his grubby hands. And the next time we see Jesus in the book of Revelation, he has hanging from his girdle keys. They're the keys of death and hell. A key is made to lock or unlock valuables. Jesus defeated our great enemy, death, not by proclaiming his infant's ability over it, but by submitting himself to it. Jesus has the keys back. He took the curse. He paid the price. He brought them back from Satan's hands. Who owns, who controls hell, death, and life? The keys are back in our Lord's hands. We belong to God for two reasons. Number one, He made us. But number two, when we rebelled and strayed, He bought us back with His own precious blood. Jesus tells Peter in Matthew 16, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Through Jesus, the dominion we lost, the dominion we delivered unto Satan in the garden has been restored. It has been purchased back. We have been set free. And Jesus gives us the keys. But we dare not, we dare not forget what the keys, the dominion, the leadership is based on. It all comes back to the tree and our acknowledgement that God owns us and owns all we are and all we do and all we have. Maybe you've never committed your life to the Lordship of Jesus. I have good news for you. God loves you. Jesus went to the cross to purchase you back to God. You are God's because he made you, but he's bought you back as well. And, but God's not going to force himself. He, he created us to love him because we choose to, not because we have to. He made us love him because we want to, not because we were just designed that that's the only thing we could do. We're not some fancy doll. You pull the string and we say, I love you, God. We're people with a choice. And God comes to you and he knocks on the door of your life. He says, I want to forgive you. I want to cleanse you. I want to wash you. And you can have God and all you have to do is give him everything. What a deal. (laughs) What a deal that is. If that's you and you'd say, Pastor, I'm not a believer. I'm not a Christian today. I don't know Jesus, but I want to know him. I want you to pray for me. You make an altar where you are and put yourself as the living sacrifice up on the altar and say, Lord, take me. Take all of me. And help me to Help me to be obedient to you. Let's worship today. The next episode of Think Twice TV podcast is entitled Healings Happen. Dennis Clanton's story from incurable to made whole. Julie's story, child's miracle healing. And Claudia's story, a lifetime of miracle memories. Hey, thanks for listening to this podcast. I hope it's been helpful and look forward to bringing you more great stories on the next Think Twice TV podcast. This venture is sponsored by Media Messengers Evangelistic Association, revealing the love and power of God through media, www.mediamessengers.org. If you like the show, follow us on social media and please help us reach more people. All our social links are in the show notes.